I believe that most folks, like yourselves, understand that on a train journey, great adventure may never be very far away. And that long after the sound of a train whistle has vanished, its romance will be safe in every human heart, whatever the age, whatever the time. The show sucks now. I can't show any of the reboot because Mattel is blocking videos that show it, so f you. It's dead. They killed it, and now they are toying around with the body on strings for their sick, twisted game. I never thought I'd see a day when a children's icon with so much passion and lore connected to it actually became a typical hyperactive stupid f***ing baby show where none of the engines sit still and have to be talking like everything's a question so the brain dead tech infused brats can keep their focus! This obviously isn't the Thomas that I remember and I'm going to share with you all the Thomas that I and many other children and grown-ups enjoyed over the years. This is what made Thomas the Tank Engine more than a kid show. So I want you all to face away from your phones or screens or whatever you're watching this on. But keep listening to what I'm going to say because I want you to picture what I'm about to describe. I want you to picture a magical land. A land inhabited with rich countryside, a crystal clear sky with clouds that you would think were made of cotton candy. This land, this land works very much like ours. There are children who go to school and adults who go to work and cars and buses go about the busy streets. But what makes this island the most magical place of all is its railway. So Topham Hatt's Northwestern Railway inhabited with colorful steam trains who talk. These engines are very much like friends you have now or have had when you were younger. It's the big and proud yet often boastful Gordon. The cheeky and funny Percy you can always count on. The boastful and stunning James with his splendid red coat. Old reliable Edward with his knowledge of a thousand literatures. Toby, who despite being different is always part of the family. And Henry, the lovable coward with a passion for trees. This is barely scraping the barrel at all the friendly faces you will come across on this railway. But don't think I haven't forgotten the most important friend you'll see here. Thomas the Tank Engine. Now you may know Thomas as just a train. He does the same things trains do in the real world, as he should. But Thomas is different. He, he's your friend. You can rely on Thomas because he'll always be there for you, in the comfort of your screen or in physical form at your local toy store. The thing about Thomas is that each of these characters are so relatable and lifelike that despite being trains, they tackle issues that you and many others will face such as identity crisis, realization, maturity, the values of friendship and the people around you, how to be a better person, and most of all, how to feel safe. Thomas will make you feel safe. He is a friend you can go to whenever you find yourself in a spot of bother. Thomas is a franchise that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Children can appreciate its drawing charm and friendly characters. Teenagers enjoy it as a comfort mechanism during the worst time to be alive, and adults can look back on it for nostalgia and to appreciate its scenery. The fan base for this show is insane. We as fans have managed to take this simple concept of Trains With Faces and pick apart every single little detail, analyzing it in and out to get its full meaning. We've had conventions, people in it own screen use props, and have met people behind the show and fans have even made full-length feature films based on things from the show or in which are completely original. We have honoured the legacy of Wilbur Audrey and his family better than the corporate scumbags spitting on this man's grave. We know the importance of this island to Audrey better than Mattel ever will. Each fan will proudly tell you what Thomas means to them and why it's so important. For me personally, Thomas has stapled a lot of what I'm pretty sure my life is going to be. The franchise opened my eyes to voice acting. It brought me into the passion of art and model making. It showed me how to make friends, and my god, those friends are fucking great. And Thomas brought me out of a severely dark period in my life. My dad was in and out a lot, which always hit me like a truck. I was struggling with my own identity and who I wanted to be, which took a toll of how I am around people, so my friends ended up being distant with me. 
There are other things that contribute to this which I won't go into, but things were pretty doom and gloom for a long, long time. Most of it now is just a blur to me. It's all a mix of trial and error with changing my personality every week to try and avoid being the worst aspects of myself. Then, in March 2017, I offered my services to someone on Instagram who wanted me to voice act in the Thomas series. We talked and we became friends. He asked if I wanted to join a group chat he was in with some of his friends who also liked Thomas. Answering yes to that question was the best choice I'd ever made in my entire life. Before this, I had gradually been getting back into Thomas since around September 2016. I had found Nurtle, Thomas and Arthur in a model shop and was hit with a wave of nostalgia and warmth from when I got home. I watched some of the episodes and was instantly hooked like when I was a child. I joined the group chat and instantly felt at home. Most of the people in that chat are still some of my closest friends even to this day. I completely refurbished my account to be specifically Thomas as well as my YouTube channel and the rest is history. I met Sean that same July. In 2018, I got a thousand followers on Instagram. In 2019, I joined Twitter and joined Train Gang. And 2020, the worst year for so many people, including myself, was made slightly tolerable by how many great people I met this year. I am so grateful for the time I have had in this fandom and I am going to for years to come. But it's simple, Thomas is just so great. The universe is established as something I don't see any other kid show even lasting long enough to do. It encourages its fans to make their own stories and speak their mind. We know better than what Mattel knows about Thomas. Their first thought is money and fame, not if people will enjoy it. There may not always be a current Thomas, but classic Thomas is safe from harm. Just like he did for us when we were young, we're making sure he's safe for generations to come. So before I end this video, I want to play some clips from Classic Thomas, which I believe truly embrace the magic and the wonder of this series. Take a look. When the trucks arrived, Toby was delighted. They were full of splendid young trees, all ready for planting. This is the best job I've ever had, said Toby happily. When Henry returned, he was most surprised. There were Trevor and Terence busily helping the workmen clear the torn stumps and branches. Look, Henry, called Terence, we're beginning again. The hillside will look better than ever before. You'll see. Now Henry can see the trees growing strong and tall, and the animals are coming back. Sometimes everywhere is quiet. At other times, Henry can hear leaves rustling or a bird's wing brushing the air. Often, he can hear the sound of children laughing and always, he is happy here. Stuart and Falcon were ready with a big welcome. He's here, they whispered, shh, shh. You woke me up, grumbled Duke. In my young days, engines were seen and not heard, Grandpuff, we know. We'll all be back to work tomorrow. We're glad you've come back. We can keep you in order now. Keep me in order? Be off with you. Impudent scallywags, murmured Duke. But his old eyes twinkled, and for the first time in years, he smiled as he dozed in the sun. And that, said Thomas, is the whole story. Did you like it? Yes, indeed, agreed the engines, especially the happy ending. And soon they were all asleep too. ...by the sea, there are passenger ships, cargo ships, and fishing boats also come here. They unload their fish on the quay. Some of it goes to shops in the town, and the rest in a special train to other places far away. This is the train the railwaymen call the Flying Kipper. Henry was ready at five o'clock. There was snow and frost. Men hustled and shouted, loading the vans with crates of fish. The last door banged. The guard showed his green lamp. The flying kipper was ready to go.
Come on, come on, don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Henry to the vans. The vans shuddered and groaned. Trock, trick, trock, trick. All right, all right. That is better, that is better, puffed Henry. Clouds of smoke and steam poured from his funnel into the cold air, and the fire's light shone brightly. Hurry, hurry, hurry! The next day, Reneus came home. All the engines were there to greet him. Edward pushed his truck to the siding where he was lifted onto his rails. This was the signal for a chorus of whistles from engines large and small. Everyone was happy, and Reneus was the happiest of all. You know, he whispered to Scarlowey, this helps a little engine to feel that at last he has really come home. A small tear came into Trevor's eye. Thomas pretended not to see. He whistled gaily to make Trevor happy. I'll come and see you if I can, he promised. The vicar will look after you and there's plenty of work for you now at the orchard. But we may need you again at the harbour someday. That would be wonderful, said Trevor. That evening, Trevor stood remembering his new friend Thomas, the harbour, and most of all, the children. Then he went happily to sleep in the shed at the bottom of the orchard. Duck still wonders about the lands beyond the horizon. But he enjoys being with friends most of all, and I think he knows that sometimes the best travels are those we can only dream about. Don't you? So that's just a little kind of video that I wanted to try out after seeing the reboot, and I wanted... it was just a vent basically. I wanted to get a lot out that he had bottled up about the reboot and I felt I should share on a platform I don't really use much with is YouTube, which I want to start doing again. I want to start making videos again because, yeah, I like making videos and I like seeing people like my videos. It makes me feel happy. And yeah, I'm recording this at 3am. I'm listening to Spongebob music, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> um, but the reboot's gonna fail, so it doesn't matter. We're just gonna let Thomas die, and maybe the movie will make it good, and like, bring it back, but we'll see. Um, I wanna thank everyone, like, who made the music for this video. It wasn't, like, custom made, but it was really cool. Um, Mavis M made the Henry Soros instrumental. You know what? The titles are all there. You can go find it. Um, I want to thank all my friends who filmed footage for the fan part. Um, Max, Hobscot007, Joel, Train Guy Rye, um, oh, 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 fuck off, Don. Um, just all, all the people that have made the past, what, nearly four years? in the community, like, the best time of my entire life. Y'all are really cool, and I love you. And, um, yeah. I'm gonna go listen to Spongebob music now, so... Bye.